Hi, this video has 20 minutes. Topics covered here are in order abstraction, attention span, working memory, computer memory, um, crystal oscillator, oscillation, and perpetual motion. And I made a I made a song, <laughs> a rap song about the time crystal, which is uh, something that uh, just got uh, over that uh, pop sign news feed uh, it's basically a crystal that uh, is able to maintain a perpetual motion without uh, yeah basically maintain a perpetual motion at a very low state of energy okay abstraction in its main sense is a conceptual process by which general rules and concepts are derived from the use and classification of specific examples literal um, signifiers, first, principle, first principles, or other methods. An abstraction is the product of this process, a concept that acts as a supercategorical noun for all subordinate concepts and connects any related concepts as a group, field, or category. Conceptual abstractions may be formed by filtering the information content of a concept of or a observable phenomenon, selecting only the aspects which are relevant for a particular purpose, for example, abstracting a leather soccer ball to the more general idea of a ball selects only the information, general ball attributes and behavior, eliminating the other characteristics, uh, characteristics of that particular ball. In a type token distinction, a type is more abstract than its tokens. Uh, the token is, in this case is the leather soccer ball and the type is the ball. Abstraction in its secondary use is a material process discussed in the themes. Uh, below the article. All right. Attention span is the amount of concentrated time one can spend on a task without becoming distracted. Most educators and psychologists agree that the ability to focus and sustain attention on a task is crucial for the achievement of one's goals. Estimates for the length of human attention span are highly variable and depend on the precise definition of uh, attention being used. Transient attention is a short-term response to a stimulus that temporarily attracts distracts attention, attracts or distracts attention. Researchers disagree on the exact amount of human transient attention span, some say maybe as short as 8 seconds. Selective sustained attention, also known as focused attention, is the level of attention that produces the consistent results on a task over time. Some state that the average human attention span is approximately 8 seconds. Others state that most healthy teenagers and adults are unable to sustain attention on one thing for more than about 20 minutes at a time, although they can choose repeatedly to refocus on the same thing. This ability to renew attention permits people to pay attention to things that last for more than a few minutes, such as long films. Attention span, as measured by sustained attention over time, spent continuously on tasks varies with age. Older children are capable of longer periods of attention than younger children. For time on test measurements, the type of activity used in the test affects the results, as people are generally capable of a longer attention span when they are doing something that they find enjoyable or intrinsically motivated, uh, motivating. Uh, attention is also increased if the person is, is able to perform the task fluently compared to a person who has difficulty performing the task or to the same person when he or she is just learning the test. Fatigue, hunger, noise, and emotional stress reduce the time focus on the test. Common estimates for sustained attention for freely chosen tasks range from about 5 minutes for a 2-year-old child to a maximum of around uh, 20 minutes in older children and adults. After losing attention from a topic, a person may restore it by taking a rest, doing a different kind of activity, changing mental focus, or deliberately choosing to refocus on the first topic. What is the time in minutes that contains a well-pronounced space reading of Wikipedia, uh, Wikipedia's attention span article? 8 minutes. Uh, working memory. Let's see about measures and correlates. Working memory capacity can be tested by a variety of tasks. A commonly used measure is the dual task paradigm combining a memory span measure with a concurrent processing task, sometimes referred to as complex span. Damon and Carpenter invented the first version of this kind of task, the reading span in 1980. 
Subjects read a number of sentences, usually between two and six, and try to remember the last word of each sentence. At the end of a list of sentences, they repeated back the word in their correct order. Other tasks that do not have this dual task nature have also been shown to be good measures of working memory capacity. The question of what features a task must have to qualify as a good measure of working memory capacity is a topic of ongoing research. Measures of working memory capacity are strongly related to performance in other complex cognitive tests such as reading comprehension, problem solving, and with measures of intelligence quotient. Some researchers have argued that working memory capacity reflects the efficiency of executive functions, most notably the ability to maintain a multiple tasks relevant for representation in the face of distracting relevant information and that such tests what is this noise? That such tests seem to reflect individual um, differences in the ability to focus and maintain attention. Particularly when other events are serving to capture attention, these effects seem to be a function of frontal brain errors. Frontal brain errors. Uh, several authors have proposed that symptoms of ADHD arise from a primary deficit in a specific executive function EF, uh, short, short for EF. Domains such as working memory, response inhibition, or a more general weakness in executive control. A meta-analytical review cites several studies that found significant lower group results for ADHD in spatial and verbal working memory tasks and in several other EF tasks. However, the authors concluded that EF weaknesses neither are necessary nor sufficient to cause all cases of ADHD. Several neurotransmitters such as dopamine and glutamate may be both involved in ADHD and working memory. Both are associated with the frontal brain, self-direction and self-regulation, but cause effect have not been confirmed. So it is unclear whether working memory dysfunction leads to ADHD or ADHD distractibility leads to poor functionality of working memory or if there is some other connection. Other researchers have argued that the capacity of working memory is better characterized as the ability to mentally form relations between elements or to grasp relations in given information. This idea has been advanced, among others, by Grim Halford, who illustrated it by our limited ability to understand statistical interactions between variables. These authors ask people to compare written statements about the relations between several variables to graphs illustrating the same or different relation as in the following sentence. If the cake is from France, then it has more sugar. If it is made with a chocolate, uh, it, if it is made with chocolate, then if it is made with cream. But if the cake is from Italy, then it has more sugar. If it is made with cream, then if it is made of chocolate. This statement describes a relation between three variables, country, ingredient, and amount of sugar. Which is the maximum most individuals can understand? The capacity limit apparent here is obviously not a memory limit. All relevant information can be seen continuously, but a limit to how many relationships are discerned simultaneously. In computing, memory refers to the computer hardware devices used to store information for immediate use in a computer. It is synonymous with the term primary storage. Computer memory operates at a high speed, for example, random access memory as a distinction from storage that provides a uh, provides slow to access program and data storage but offers higher capacities. If needed, contents of the computer memory can be transferred to secondary storage through a memory management technique called virtual memory, an archaic synonym for memory store. The term memory, meaning primary storage or main memory, is often associated with addressable semiconductor memory integrated circuits consisting of silicon-based transistors used for example as primary storage but also the purpose in computers and other digital electronic devices. There are two main kinds of semiconductor memory, volatile and non-volatile. Examples of non-volatile memory are flash memory used as secondary memory and ROM with an O, PROM, EEPROM and EEPROM used for storing firmware such as BIOS, B -I -O -S. 
Examples of volatile memory are primary storage, which is typically dynamic, uh, dynamic random access memory, DRAM, DRAM. And first, CPU cache memory, which is typically static, uh, static random access memory, SRAM. But it's fast but energy consuming, offering lower memory aerial density than DRAM, DRAM. Most semiconductor memory is organized into memory cells or bistable flip-flops, each storing one bit, zero or one. Flash memory organization includes both one bit per memory cell and multiple bits per cell, called MLC, multiple level cell. The memory cells are grouped into words of fixed word length, for example, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, or 128 bits. Each word can be accessed by a binary address of n bit, making it possible to store two rays by n words in the memory. Two rays by n. Yeah. Uh, two to the power of n. This implies that processor registers normally are not considered as memory, since they only store one word and do not include an addressing mechanism. Typical secondary storage devices are hard disk drives um, and solid state drives. Computers rely on clock signaling. Clock signaling is made by a crystal oscillator. A crystal oscillator is an electronic oscillator circuit that uses the mechanical resonance of a vibrating crystal of piezoelectric material to create an electrical signal with a precise frequency. This frequency is commonly used to keep track of time, as in quads, wristwatches, to provide a stable clock signal for digital integrated circuits, and to stabilize frequencies for radio transmitters and receivers. The most common type of piezoelectric resonator using the quads uh, uses the quartz crystals, so oscillator circuits incorporating them become known as crystal oscillators. But other piezoelectric materials, including polycrystalline ceramics, are used in similar circuits. Quartz crystals are manufactured for frequencies from a few tens of kilohertz to hundreds of megahertz. More than 2 billion crystals are manufactured annually. Most are used for consumer devices such as rich wrist watches, clocks, radios, computers, and cell phones. Quartz crystals are also found inside test and measurement equipments such as counters, signal generators, and oscilloscopes. Oscillation is the repetitive variation typically in time of some measure about a central value, often a point of equilibrium or between two or more different states. The term vibration is precisely used, in, used to describe mechanical oscillation. Familiar examples of oscillation include a swinging pendulum and alternating current power. Oscillations occur not only in mechanical systems but also in dynamic systems and virtually every area of science. For example, the beating human heart, business, uh, business cycles in economics, predator prey population cycles in ecology, geothermal geysers in geology vibrating strings in musical instruments, uh, periodic firing of nerve cells in the brain, and the periodic swelling of cephalic variable stars in astronomy. Perpetual motion is a motion of bodies that continues indefinitely. This is impossible because of friction or the energy dissipating processes. A perpetual motion machine is a hypothetical machine that can do work indefinitely without an energy source. This kind of machine is impossible, as it would violate the first or second law of thermodynamics. These laws of thermodynamics apply even at very grand scales, for example, the motions and rotations of celestial bodies, such as planets, may appear virtual, uh, but are actually subject to many processes that slowly dissipate their kinetic energy, such as solar wind, interstellar medium resistance, gravitational radiation and thermal radiation so they will not keep moving forever. Those machines that extract energy from finite sources will not operate indefinitely because they are driven by the energy stored in the source, which will eventually be exhausted. A common example is devices powered by ocean currents whose energy is ultimately derived from the sun which itself will eventually burn out. 
Machines powered by more obscure sources have been proposed, but are subject to the same inescapable laws and will eventually wind down. Yeah. Scientists have confirmed a brand new form of matter, time crystals. For months now, there has been speculation that researchers might have finally created time crystals, strange crystals that have an atomic structure that repeats not just in space, but in time, putting them in in perpetual motion without energy. Not sufficient researchers have just reported in detail how to make and measure these bizarre crystals. And two independent teams of scientists claim they actually created time crystals in the lab based off the, this blueprint, confirming the existence of an entirely new form of matter. Their discovery might sound pretty abstract, but it had out in a whole new era of physics. For decades, we've been studying matter that's defined as being in equilibrium, such as metals and insulators, but it's been predicted that there are many more strange types of matter out there in the universe that aren't in equilibrium that we haven't even begun to look into, including time crystals. And now we know they're real. The fact that we now have the first example of non-equilibrium matter could lead to breakthroughs in our understanding of the world around us as well as new technologies such as quantum computing. This is a new phase of matter, period, but it is also really cool because it is one of the first examples of non-equilibrium matter, said lead researcher Norman Yao from the University of California, Berkeley. For the last half century, we have been exploring equilibrium matter like metals and insulators. We are just now starting to explore a whole new landscape of non-equilibrium matter. Let's take a step back for a second because the concept of time crystals has been floating around for a few years now. First predicted by Nobel Prize winning theoretical physicist Frank Wilczek back in 2012, time crystals are structures that appear to have movement even at their lowest energy state, known as ground state. Usually, when a material is in ground state, also known as the zero-point energy of a system, it means movement should theoretically be impossible, because that would require it to expand energy. Wow, that's very... Uh, that's incorrect. As a physicist, I can tell you that uh, this article is written by an idiot. But Wilkesack predicted that this might not actually be the case for time crystals. Normal crystals have an atomic structure that repeats in space, just like the carbon lattice of a diamond, but just like a ruby or a diamond, they are motionless because they are in equilibrium in their ground state. Um, the time crystals have a structure that repeats in time, not just in space. Ooh. And they keep oscillating in its ground state. So basically what, what this is, is a crystal that oscillates. Uh, and a, it oscillates for a very long time. We already have crystals that oscillate, and we are using them now on computers. Uh, this one, this one is uh, is part of a model created by Frank Wilczek. Uh, it's the Frank Wilczek is the Nobel Prize winner of 2012. Normal crystals have an atomic structure that repeats in space. Yeah. Sorry for that. Um, so it seems to to make it complicated if you're not familiar with these terms. Uh, normal crystals have an atomic structure that repeats in space. This is not the definition of crystal. This is not. And. Uh, Time crystals have a structure that repeats in time is wrong. It's wrong. It's not a structure. It's not what uh, common people call a structure. It's just that uh, the structure of a time crystal oscillates with a very low energy. Uh, the structure doesn't repeat in time. If you are if you're familiar with the concept of crystallization, crystallization, um, you should understand that uh, normal crystals would crystallize under the same conditions. OK, 
Okay, so here's the rap song. Walking up the block, running on the clock. I wish I had a Glock. Sip me with the shizzle stairs, cranks so not anything. Streams. Strip the machine for wins. This is the time crystal. Can't say it works out of box. It ain't no boat talks from Credo to Bizzle Weasel down. First step, the crap's down. For massa toxica, I was playing Minecraft and I found a new crystal. It said to me, oh, late, it was a time crystal. Boulevard rides, sometimes of crimes for dimes. Mix the beat for the Portuguese.